bloody fantastic. Hey, hello everyone, my name is Good Boy, and today we're going to be looking at why Wraith King is OP right now and awesome for the meta. For many of you who are enjoying the sub 4k uh, pub stomp scene, picking the right hero is a critical venture. Naturally, of course, spamming and picking uh, a hero that you're most familiar with is going to be usually the best thing that's going to help you improve MMR. But nonetheless, even amongst the highest of skilled players, there are certain heroes that do not fit particularly well in the meta and tend to lose more than others. And one such hero in the sub 4k scene, even the sub 3k scene, has to be Wraith King number one with a bullet. An awesome peer hero to select, and here are some great reasons why. So first off, let's talk about why he works so incredibly well in the meta. He does lots of things that are really, really good. The biggest one, though, is his endurance. He has lifesteal on his attacks, which, of course, keeps him alive, makes him more durable, makes him effective at jungling. Pretty effective in every lane, maybe not mid, but, um, but off lane and safe lane, he fares exceptionally well. But on top of that, it's, it's mainly his ultimate ability. And the reason why the ultimate ability of his works so well, he was, by the way, prior to 7.0, he was actually pretty viable anyway. And having not really received any major nerfs, certainly not in the most recent patches, Wraith King is actually becoming more and more viable. Like I say, the big thing that the meta has always thrived around is your durability. So that is to say that if people gank and kill you, if you can, or try and kill you, you can survive. And obviously with the ultimate of Wraith King, he is exceptionally difficult to kill. And obviously this survivability works wonders. Um, so that's, that's one of the big ones. And like I say, generally his lifesteal and the fact that he can be pretty tanky himself makes him pretty scary. But it gets a whole lot better in terms of the meta. Part of the other reason why the meta also favours him now more than ever is because the nature of the game is changing. So prior to this patch, getting to level 25, so prior to 7.05 and 7.03, to be honest, 7.03 in my mind was actually the, the bigger shift. And then the other two successive patch updates have just sort of followed suit. I've seen um, Valve making attempts to move the game away from the mid game, uh, early to mid game into the mid to late game. And that is definitely working. Average games are taking much longer. And perhaps more critically, um, getting to level 25 is far more achievable. So several things have happened. One, the laning one to levels one to six has taken longer with experience game, and getting to level from level 20 to 25 actually takes less experience than before. So as you can see, getting to level 25 is is successful. Now, why is this relevant to Wraith King particularly? An already good, perfectly meta viable hero has now seen his ultimate ability. The only counter to which, by the way is Mana Burn. Mana Burn is the only thing that wrecks Wraith King's ultimate. Now, a mid-game Phantom Lancer with a Diffusal Blade is going to be really, really bad news for Wraith King. Absolute nightmare. Burns his mana away, no ultimate, no nothing. As soon as he hits level 25, you he will be triggering his ultimate. And you think about that with an Axe and an Octarine Core, not that I recommend those, probably a bit overkill, he is exceptionally difficult to actually kill almost nigh impossible to kill and of course with his crits his huge amount of damage that he does and his aura that buffs the team um, you can imagine how satanic he can be to deal with and that's kind of one of the other successes to wraith king's story is that obviously his vampiric aura buffs the team he is a damage dealer he's a scary damage dealer and that disable helps quite a lot so these things are factoring in to make wraith king absolutely satanic to deal with right now. Now, there are some other points as well that I'd like to sort of uh, mention upon. So let's look at sort of in the different phases of the game. Now, prior, so you are still going to struggle as a Wraith King against a Phantom Lancer, for sure. He will, you know, it, it's a problem. And Mana Burn, you know, like a Nyx Assassin, although Nyx Assassin is nowhere near as scary, or an Anti-Mage are going to be uh, big problems for you. Prior to level 6, obviously Wraith King is um, vulnerable in the sense that his ultimate won't trigger. However, if for example he's jungling or just has a reasonably robust lane, because ganking is now reduced, that vulnerability tends to be less of a problem for you. So it's really only the mid game you need to, you need to concern yourself with. And that's where you have to consider your options very, very carefully. Generally speaking, as long as you're not hard countered, so there's only a few really good hard counters, it's Manabur, it's Diffusal Blade Carriers, 
and natural mana burners like Nyx or uh, anti mage are a problem. That's a handful of about three or four heroes that are a, a big concern. And again, their counter goes off the boil. If you don't have those, then just aggressive hard farming. Um, and obviously making sure you're there when you need to be is, is going to work wonders. The next thing as well, probably worth mentioning with him, is the vulnerability to kite. This is why I recommend very strongly a blink dagger on the guy. Um, pretty much most, if not in every single situation. Um, because once again, this helps eliminate the... Well, it can help potentially eliminate kiting issues. Because mobility is probably one of the Wraith King's biggest weaknesses. So with that, and then and then there's another thing. You know, power trades is a pretty standard item on, on Wraith King, and they've been buffed recently, extra attributes. So when you switch your power treads onto agility, suddenly his you know armor and his attack speed goes through the roof. It makes him insane, absolutely insane. And in conjunction with that ultimate of his, you've got this psychotic ghost skeleton monster thing whacking you all the time, giving you major crits. Um, so you have that kind of thing, and like I say, your, your team fight presence is great. And then, of course, level 25, late game, guy's invincible. Basically, is invincible. He will not die. His ultimate is such a low cooldown anyway. He can initiate successfully. And like I say, if you decide to go Roshan as well and give him the Aegis, then that really is going to be uh, a complete um, whitewash, as it were. Now, the last thing, I suppose the last piece of, uh, of consolation and why I really recommend it to you, particularly if you're sub 3K and you're thinking, right, I really want to make some progress. I want to climb up the racket, you know, ladder uh, rankings. And of course, let's not bear, bear in mind, assuming your team doesn't need supports. <laughs> I do recommend supports. It's a great way to climb. Well, it's, it is in a way a great way to climb if you need, your team needs it. But as far as cores go, Wraith King is exceptionally easy to do. Think about it. He's got three abilities that are passives, and he has one stun. That is it. What does he need to do? He needs to get in your face and hit you. And that's pretty much it. And that stun of his is really quite fantastic. So with, with Wraith King, it's pretty straightforward. Farm your Blink Dagger, then farm you know damage items, whatever particular you fancy. Uh, blink in people's face, stun them, beat them to death. I mean, he, he, he's, <laughs> he's really quite simple. And, and to be honest, that even in the highest skill brackets, don't be disheartened. Don't think, oh, well, you know, you're just low skill. You suck. Even in the highest skill brackets, so even in 5K plus MMR skill brackets, he still actually fares really decently in the top 20, 25 best heroes right now with the best win rates. <laughs> is Wraith King. And like I say, just because a hero is easy doesn't mean they're bad. That just means it's easier for lower skill players to, to get on with him. Now generally what I'm speak, saying is, in terms of cores, there are a couple of cores I recommend right now, but Wraith King has to be number one. Uh, and like I say, it won't take you long. It will not take you long to get the knack of Wraith King. And then just enjoy that, that sort of um, successful farm, successful killing sprees, and successful great scalability into the late game. Really, really great late game carry. Terrifying late game carry. And I and I think I think yeah, you wrap those all together, you can have a great idea as to why the guy is so bloody good right now, and why um, if you've got like a set of two or three cores to add to, and, and, and your focus is MMR, or you've lost a load of matches, you're sick to death of losing, Wraith King is your man. Do try it out, and of course, my channel will have a wealth of guides for you to help you maximise his potential even further. Hey everybody, thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned for more great stuff very soon. Please like, subscribe, and share. Goodbye.